Hi, and in this video, I'm gonna share one hidden thing you have to avoid if you wanna build lasting love with a guy. Hi there, Matt Schaefer, your empowerment, connection, and relationship coach. I'm a former attorney who's committed his life to supporting you and creating the sort of fun, fulfilling, and dynamic connections and relationships with men that you are so worthy of. And in this video, we're gonna talk about one really important thing that most women don't know about that creates so many issues around attraction and polarity with men and how to avoid it. We're going to dive deep into it, but before we do, take a second, hit that little subscribe button, and don't forget to click the link in the comments and caption. I have created some great training. It's going to make a huge difference in your relationships and connections with men. So let's dig into this because this is one of the biggest issues I see women struggling with when it comes to pushing away men or not creating the sort of polarity or attraction with men in dating and relationship. And it's something that you may not be aware of because it's a hidden trigger that many men have. And so if you're not familiar with the concept of triggers, triggers are these hidden wounds or pain points that we have stored within us, right? That are usually based in our past experiences and our past relationships. And when a trigger gets activated through the behavior of a current partner or something they say or something they do, the trigger comes to the surface and we experience the pain and the trauma of that past event in the present. And we project that often <laughs> onto our partner or onto the person who activated it. So it's kind of like stepping on a landmine, right? It's buried beneath the surface and then you step on it and boom, before you know it, you have a confrontation or some kind of conflict with your partner. And this is one of the biggest triggers that most men have. It is their mama trauma. <laughs> and most women activate it and ignite it on accident all the time. So I'm going to share with you four ways that you can avoid activating his mama trauma. But first off, let's talk about what mama trauma is in the first place. So to understand mama trauma, you need to understand one very fundamental principle that at heart, all men are little boys. All men have this fundamental little boy within them. They like to play, right? They like their toys. There's so many avenues and areas that men are little boys and embody that energy. And another big area of life where men are little boys is in relationship. And I don't mean all the time, right? You can be emotionally mature and still have that little boy consciousness or energy within you. And when we were little boys, there was nothing that was more devastating for most of us than getting in trouble with our moms. It's a core wound that almost all men share. And it's a wound that most of us are still carrying with us to this day, especially when it comes to our relationships with women, right? Because our relationship with our mother sets the template and our initial patterns for all of our relationships with other women moving forward in our life. And this deeply held fear of getting in trouble with our mom is something that most men are carrying around with them. And it's very easy for that to get triggered in your relationship with him. So the goal of this video is to help you understand how to avoid triggering and activating his mama trauma. Because if you activate this and he starts to feel like he's gotten in trouble with you, like he has made you mad and he sees you as a maternal figure, it's going to depolarize your connection, right? He's going to feel emasculated and it can also kill attraction. There are a few things less attractive to a man than having him see you as his mom. So let's unpack some common ways that women activate a man's mama trauma that you can now look for and avoid. And one of the first big ways that women activate a man's mama trauma is by always fixing him, always correcting him him, right? Because I know a lot of women out there, you see your man's greatness, you see what's possible for him, and you see better ways that he can do a lot of things in his life, not just the things involving you. And you want that for him, right? So you want to fix him and help show him, hey, if you do it this way, things are going to go better for him. I get it. But here's the problem with that. When you're constantly fixing him and correcting him, think about who you are representing. You're representing his mom, right? Because when he was growing up, when he was a little kid, his mom was constantly saying, get better grades. Make sure to straighten your shirt. Brush your teeth before you go to bed. She was constantly correcting him and fixing him. You need to go to this kind of school if you want to get this kind of job and sort of operating from that space of pushing him and pushing him and pushing him. And you got to remember, like when you start fixing a man on a regular basis, he is going to feel wrong a lot. Right, Because anytime he's feeling like you're fixing him, he's feeling like he wasn't enough at some deeper level. 
And when a man consistently feels wrong or like he's not enough in his connection with you, it's a very heavy feeling. It's a very emasculated feeling. And it's really the opposite of the kind of energetic dynamic you're looking to create with him, which is empowered and free and courageous. Remember, he wants you to be his biggest cheerleader and the person who sees him in his greatness and is encouraging him towards it. So avoid being the fixer and you're going to avoid activating his mama trauma. Another big way that women often accidentally activate a man's mama trauma is by controlling or micromanaging him with guilt. One of the most painful things most men heard when they were growing up from their moms was, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. <laughs> and so you got to remember, like when a man is invested in you, when he's in relationship with you, he is very invested in your emotions and in your emotional state. So if you start holding that over his head, Head and controlling his behavior and controlling his decisions through your emotional state and making him feel guilty about that, you run a big chance of activating his mama trauma and getting him to feel, oh my gosh, I'm in trouble, I'm in trouble, what do I need to do to fix this? And it's a very anxious, fearful state for a lot of men. And it also, it's very disempowering. If you're micromanaging his life, if you're controlling every little aspect of his life, especially using guilt, Right? Like one way uh, an ex-girlfriend used to do this with me is I would want to make plans with my guy friends and go out and do fun stuff. And I would make those plans because I didn't have set plans with her. And then she, because she felt threatened by my guy friends and by my relationship with them, would, would talk to me and say, oh, you want to go out with your guy friends? Well, I thought we were going to have dinner tonight. And I'm like, well, we didn't plan that. <laughs> and she says, well, I, I just assumed that because we had dinner this time, this day last week, that we'd have dinner this week. And she would get really disappointed with me because of unspoken plans with me and really want me to feel that sense of disappointment and uh, inherent obligation to her because of her emotional state. And that ended up making me, you know, very checked out of the relationship and I started resenting her a little bit. <laughs> this was before I stepped into personal development and communicating my feelings effectively to my partners. It's just something to watch out for, right? Because if you start doing passive aggressive behavior towards your man, you run the risk of activating his mama trauma, especially if his mom used that kind of conditioning and guilt on him when he was little. And probably the most common way that women activate a man's mama trauma is through one simple pattern, giving a man a command or a request without giving him context. And I talked about this on a prior video and I want to reemphasize it here. If you tell a man what to do or even ask him to do something for you and you do not give him the context around it, you run a real risk of bringing up this wound for him. Because think about it, when he was little, right? What would his mom say? His mom would say, hey, take out the trash. And he would say, oh, mom, why? And she'd say, because I said so, because I'm your mother. Little boys, when they're growing up, are often conditioned to do what their mom says specifically because they were told to do so, and they don't have a right to get an explanation or any context around that request. So you don't want to show up that way to him. So if you have a request for him, let him know. Give him the context as to why it's important to you, how it's going to make you feel. Oftentimes, you can ground a request in a feeling statement and make it super powerful and activating to him, right? It's going to actually activate him to want to do it instead of just doing it because, oh my gosh, if I don't do this, I'm going to get in trouble. It's the distinction between activation and assertion that's really important for you to stay connected to in your relationship with a man. So if you want him to take out the garbage, just ask him in an activating way. Say, hey, I'd really love it if you could take out the garbage so that we could settle in and have our date night that I've been looking forward to all week. So you're saying, I would love it if you would take out the garbage so that we could move forward and have our date night. You're giving him context to understand why it's important to you and what you both are gonna get out of it as a result of his action. So that's activating to him rather than saying, hey, take out the garbage. It's dinner time. See, that's much more emasculating and it's much more likely to activate its mama trauma, which you do not want to do. 
And the last common way that women activate a man's mama trauma is by being very aggressive and confrontive with him with their feelings. So if you're in a triggered state, if you're mad at him or annoyed or frustrated with him, you want to be really conscious of your energy when you're communicating and expressing those emotions to him. Of course, your emotions and your feelings are very valid and it's very important that you express them to him, but come to it from a space of partnership, right? Because if you're coming at him, yelling at him about how you're feeling or what's coming up for you, blaming him for it or making it his fault, that is going to bring him right back to when he was a little kid and he put a bunch of rocks in the blender and then turned it on and broke the blender and then mom flipped out. <laughs> if you come to a man from a very aggressive space and a blaming space with your feelings, it is going to cause him to shut down, go into mama trauma mode, and completely be disconnected from the situation. So when you are looking to communicate confrontive feelings or experiences or share any of that with your partner or with a guy, do it from a space of partnership. Do it from a space of, hey, we're on a team, right? We're in this together. And I have a lot of feelings coming up right now. And it's important for you to understand where I'm at and the role that you've played in it so that we can work through it together. Does that sound good? He's going to be much more likely to keep his walls down and be open to what you have to share if he's not in a anxious, fearful mama trauma state. And that's just a handful of the many ways that women can activate a man's mama trauma. And so just check in with yourself on a regular basis as you're communicating with him and in relationship with him, especially when you're asking him to do things or you're having confrontations or situations like that are arising. Just ask yourself, am I showing up as his partner or as his mother. <laughs> and it's just a great check-in question to ask yourself throughout your dynamic with your partner to stay firmly rooted in that space of being in polarized partnership with your man. You want to be an activating, inviting, empowering force in his life, not a controlling, emasculating maternal force. Make sense? And one more important thing you can do as you get to know your partner better is ask him questions about his relationship with his mom. Get him talking about his feelings and his experiences with her so that you can get a sense for his specific brand <laughs> of mama trauma, as in what his wound might be based in, what sort of patterns of conflict or communication he might have had with his mother so you can learn what specific things you don't want to do to trigger him. So remember, ladies, all men are little boys at heart who just happen to grow up. And most have some degree of mama trauma, <laughs> a core wound around their relationship with their mother based in the emotional dynamics that they had or the communication or experiences that they shared that are triggers that can come up in their relationship with you because their relationship with their mom set the foundation for all female relationships they're going to have for the rest of their lives. And if you activate his mama trauma, he will revert to that little boy and he will become emasculated. He will become very fearful. He will shut down. His walls will go up and he will see you as a maternal figure rather than the activating, inviting, polarizing partner that he loves so dearly. And that is not where you want to be because that will kill attraction and polarity between the two of you. And four common ways women activate men's mama trauma are one, always fixing and correcting him. A lot of men experience this with their mothers growing up, and when a man feels like he's constantly needing to be fixed by his partner, he's always feeling wrong, which is heavy and emasculating and can cause men to check out. So don't do it. Trust your men's decision making. Let them make mistakes sometime. Let them fall on their face and just honor their ability and capacity to be in relationship with you. And a second common way women activate this trigger is micromanaging or controlling him using guilt. Remember that phrase that most men have deep within their hearts. I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed and hearing that from their mom, right? So you do not want to use your emotional state as a leverage point or control point to passively aggressively control your man. And thirdly, don't give arbitrary commands or requests without context. Because remember, when he was growing up, his mom would tell him to do something and then say, because I said so, because I'm your mom. So men love context. Context gives them meaning and purpose behind their actions. So if you have a request or a directive that you want to give a man that you're dating or in relationship with, 
let them know why. Let them know why it's going to make you happy or why it's important to you. And that's going to activate him to do it rather than assert him to do it because he might get in trouble. And lastly, be careful not to be super aggressive when sharing confrontive emotions with a man. If you come at a man in a very elevated emotional state, very aggressive, very upset with him over whatever it is, you are going to put him right back in the shoes of when he was a little kid and his mom was mad at him because he snuck a goat into the house or whatever he did. And he's going to go in anxious, fearful, shutdown mode, which is something that you want to avoid because then he's not going to be receptive to whatever it is that you want to say to him. So I invite you to share your feelings and experiences and feedback with your partner but you don't want to do it in that angry way that's going to activate his mama trauma. Come to him from a space of partnership and let him know, hey, it's important to me to share this with you so that we can work through it together. And if you're able to avoid activating a man's mama trauma by continually being in partnership with him, recognizing that you are his feminine companion, you are the inviting, evoking muse in his life, and you're constantly inspiring him to step deeper into his masculine, empowered space, you're going to create the sort of polarized relationship that's going to lead to attraction and romance and all the beautiful things that I know you're craving in your connections with men. So I hope you enjoyed these tips and you love this video. If you did, take a second, hit that little subscribe button, and don't forget to click the link in the comments and caption. I have created some great training that I know is going to make a huge difference for you in your relationships and connections with men. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.